So I saw this post on my Facebook page and I thought, yes, this is exactly right. Celibacy doesn't equate to healing. Read it again. So I'm going to say it again. Celibacy does not equate to healing. This is based on Eve Unscripted Podcast. I don't know who that is, but it was on my Facebook. And so I wanted to share that with you guys and also discuss it for about five, ten minutes. But before I do that, I want to thank you guys for being subscribers. Thank you for joining the YouTube page. Click it right there. Click it. Hit the like button and all that. Share this video because we're going to get into this more deeply. Now, this will also be on my honeypot group in on, on Facebook, which is where we're going to talk more about Tantra and esoteric things developing within the relationship. We're going to go deeper, not the surface shallow things. And this happens to be one of those surface shallow things that irritates me to no end because I thought about this for like 10 seconds as I realized that most people are filled with a BS rationality that in order for you to heal from a relationship, if you're coming out of a relationship, a traumatic relationship, whether it's physical abuse, financial abuse, whether y'all just did not like each other, y'all got on each other's nerve, you're just incompatible, whatever the situation is, most of the time people have this timeline that they say, oh, you need to spend six months by yourself and in celibacy and, and by yourself so you can heal. You need to spend a year so you can heal. Uh, many have often repeated what um, many psychologists have said uh, about two decades ago that for every year you're together, you need six months of healing. So if you were in a relationship for 10 years, 10 years, that means that, you know, for every year, there's six months. That means you need five years to heal, five years to heal. If you need five years to heal, and especially if you're seeing someone you have a problem with looking introspectively at yourself and and really rationalizing and realizing what the situation was, what the triggers was, what everything that happened in your relationship. If you need five years to ensure that you're not carrying baggage, then you just don't know how to look inside yourself. Healing is not something you can put on a timeline for any person, period. Let's, let's establish that. You can't put it on a timeline. You can't tell me I need five years of healing. You can't tell me I need 10 years of healing. You can't tell me I need a year of healing. You can't tell me if I need a day of healing. Because for one, you don't understand. If you're saying that, one of the first things you don't realize is that the healing process began before the relationship ended. It began before the relationship ended. Let me give you a very uh, intense example of that. If you have a person that's in a physically abusive relationship and they've been abused for one year, two years, five years, 10 years. And, but the moment, the moment they decided that they have to extricate themselves out of this relationship, that they got to leave this relationship, that their value, they realize that their value is too high. Their standards are too high to remain in this relationship. That's when their healing began. Their healing began when they start when they began when they started to realize that. When they started to look in the mirror and see the bruises. When they started to feel inside themselves the emotional abuse. When they started looking at the financial abuse and started setting themselves up in a way that they're not financially dependent on that person anymore. When they started that process, when they, when the thought hit the mind, the vibration increased to create and re, create an action that moved them in a direction to change the situation, they began their healing process. So, so where is this, you gotta wait till it's over. When it's over, you need this time. You, that's, that's when the heal. no, the healing began before then. Everything is just in steps. Okay, the healing began. More arguing probably ensued. More distance was created within the relationship. That sort of thing. The, the people started to not get along as well. More more changes. The person started, oh, you're changing. Now you want to do this by yourself or that by yourself. And why are you buying this or setting up that? Why do you want to go and get an education? Why do you want to uh, build a business? Why do you want to get promoted? Why do you want to do all these things? Uh, it's because you that person has began healing. And in that healing process, they began changing. They began changing to a person that loved themselves more, that valued themselves more than what the other person was putting on them. 
and then they began to change, but they began to heal. Now, once they leave the person, once they leave the person, yes, there's another level of healing, but that healing is actually easier and functions faster than when they were with the person. Because now they don't have to deal with the influences of that person. They don't have to deal with the frustration of that person. They don't have to deal with the violence of that person. They don't have to deal with the control of that person. They don't have to deal with the finances of that person. Now they are making decisions wholly for themselves and not in the benefit of the whole of the two individuals trying to be together because now they are clearly just focused on themselves, period. Now, a problem that people have is that they make the mistake of going back and forth, back and forth, dealing with them, not dealing with them, dealing with them, not dealing with them. And that, that sometimes happens. And oftentimes it could be a good thing because sometimes you need to touch that person again. Be in that person's presence again after you've had a time of being out of their presence to realize, oh, hell no. Sometimes you have that, people have that thing where they say, okay, they're by themselves. Was it really that bad? And then they have a moment with that person and it may seem good, but then that person shows them who they are again. And it's like, oh, uh, hell no. Not going back to that again. So you, you will have that back and forth, which pushes the healing. But this idea that you have to be celibate. One of the best ways to heal is through tantric practices. Tantric practices. But in order for you to truly heal through tantric practices, you need to be with someone else who can heal you and that help you heal in that in that format. For instance, if you have a person who suffered abuse, who suffered insecurities, who suffered low self-esteem and they are trying to heal themselves. Being celibate does not mean that that person is going to heal. Being celibate has absolutely nothing to do that. When you're when you're in a tantric healing process, then you need that person to touch you in a certain way and then verbalize the reaffirm verbal verbally reaffirm you. You need that person to as someone said to me a while back, walk you through your orgasm. Or even, well, let me rephrase it. Walk you into and through the orgasm, which is not just like dirty talk. It is the process of reaffirming and gaining permission and giving authority and accepting and receiving what the energy of love and forgiveness and kindness and consideration that that person has. There was um, a young lady I knew years ago, years, years ago, and she had suffered so much sexual abuse from her childhood all the way until she left, until she was into her early adulthood. One of the most healing moments that she had is when she was making love to a man and he asked permission to do everything to her. I mean permission to kiss you. Permission to touch you on your shoulder. Permission, permission to touch you here. Permission to enter you. Permission to do everything. Him going through the process of asking permission, 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 permission. Helped to give back her authority over herself that was taking away, taken away from her as a child. So you have to... So this idea of celibacy equating into uh, healing? No. Let me give you another example that is more common to a lot of people. There was a young lady that I knew. She was married. She was in a relationship. She was married, right? And in that relationship, when that relationship ended, uh, because of her spirituality, she thought that she needed to be celibate until she find her husband again. And, and when she, she was celibate for six years, six years she was celibate. Now, uh, there was some, you know, I'm sure, I don't know, never asked the question, but there may have been some masturbation in there. Uh, but was it for pleasure or was it for release or was it for getting to know herself? Never asked that question. But she was celibate for six years until she met this other man. She fell in love with this man. Now, here, here, here's where the healing never took place. In their discussions of their relationship, of how they were and who they were, there was a heavy, um, he, he was a very sexual man. 
And she proclaimed to be this super, super sexual woman that she want to make love to her husband like every day. She wants to touch all over her husband all the time. Be that, that, that physical touch was one of her love languages, her primary love language that she want to touch him and hold him and, and be all over him. Even when they're, when they're driving down the street, she want, to be, she want to be touching him. You know, that this is the personification that she gave it to the man. And, and while they, before they got married, yeah, she was touching all over him and holding him and, and driving down the car in the street. She, she proclaimed and she did these things. But soon after they got married, within three to four months after they got married, those things diminished. Within a year of them being married, married those things were basic and common like how they are in most relationships. You see that six years of celibacy created six years of horniness, created six years of fantasy, created six years of, of, of frustration, of missing the touch of somebody that she created an image of herself that did not exist because she was not practicing any type of sexuality that would demonstrate her true sexuality. She never actually healed from the previous relationship, realizing who she was. You see, healing, and I'm gonna end real quick. Healing is purely, purely looking inside yourself to see what your value is, what your standards are. Deciding then to elevate or change those standards to fit who you truly desire to be. To be able to look on the outside and see what other people have um, influence how other people have influenced you how they have made changes in you without your permission changes in you that you do not care for and separating yourself from those influences recognizing how they have uh, created the new you that you are so that you can make those changes and those things can happen whether you are celibate or not whether you're in another relationship or not the thing about another relationship it is relative to whom that person is. For instance, I saw a post, and if I can find it, I'll put it up here, where it showed um, one of these rappers is something Mike, Killer Mike, wanted to buy a new car. But the lady he with said, why put that money into a new car? No, buy a 10 unit apartment building for 250,000. They bought the, ten, the apartment unit that is now worth 650,000. The person you're with can make a huge difference in your healing because evidently, and this is, I'm just extrapolating this. I'm not sure of it. I don't know these people, but based on just that post alone, you could, you could say that killer Mike needed to heal financially from whatever previous ideas he had of himself and being by himself would not have created that. But being with this woman actually created the situation where he was able to heal from his financial mentality of flash and glamour to better long-term investments. So there was a healing that happened in that. Most of us say she motivated him or she helped him change or helped him open his eyes. Well, that's what healing is. Motivating you to change who you are, to get better at who you are, to do what is best for you that causes you to become a greater version of yourself. So celibacy can be helpful to some people. But to place that on everybody, no, it's a fallacy. If you've been abused sexually, celibacy is not going to heal you. Tantric healing is more than likely your best bet because that gentleman asking the lady uh, for permission to do everything is a form of tantric healing. Uh, people like to talk about having soul ties and, and if a man uh, you know, ejaculates in you, then you are carrying his energy for seven years or you're carrying his energy forever. That's BS. That is such BS. You know, even in biology, the cells in your body die and, and duplicate themselves every one to three years. So how are you carrying somebody's DNA for seven years and there's no baby? And even with a baby, you're carrying it for like nine months and then the baby's gone. Just as easily as you can take on energy, you can release energy. Uh, there has been people who's energy has come upon me and I and while I was dealing with them but the moment when I let them go and they're not in my life I can take three days of meditation five days of meditation depending upon who it is what it is just to get with my Tibetan bowl and and, and focus with my candles and meditate 
Releasing their energy is just as easy as I took it on. So to say that a person's energy is stuck on you, no, no. I'm not carrying energy from people I was from 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 my ex-wives. I'm not carrying their energy. Anybody I've dated, I'm not carrying their energy. Now, I will say this, if I dated or I was married to somebody and they imprinted something good, something that I like, something that I felt and I believe makes me better and, and, and it's been a part of me, I carry that. But any energy I do not desire to carry is gone because I choose to and recognize healing is a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice you make every day. But you can only make it when you look inside yourself first. Recognize what you did, who you are, why your standards were lowered, or why you allowed something to be a part of you that destroys you or, or inhibits you from growth and having great relationships. Um, you could be carrying something from your past when, when you was one, two, three, four, five, six, twenty 20 years old, you're carrying something from your past and you're just placing that in every relationship because you're still carrying it. But when you begin to say, okay, I'm carrying this, I'm carrying this frustration, I'm carrying this anger, I'm carrying this insecurity, I'm carrying this jealousy, I'm carrying this controlling, I'm carrying this, this fear, um, I'm carrying these things. Like for a long time, I carried a fear in me that said that if I allow myself to love someone as great as the love, as great of a level of love I had in my life, if they leave me, then how much that's going to pain me so much greater than when I lost that love. So I can love you up to here, but not above here. Because if I love you above here, then the pain that you can create in my life would be above the pain that was created when I love this much. So I carried a fear of that for a long time. And it wasn't until like two, two, about two and a half years ago that I let that fear go. About two and a half years ago, I let that fear go. I spent 15 days in meditation. Um, I went deep within myself to let that fear go. And, and, and when I let that fear go, I was able to love above that without the fear of the pain that could be above that. For, and, 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 when, when, and, if that, and when that love, not if, when that love has, been, has not come back, I looked inside myself to see, okay, what, what energies have I had that I inputted, that I, that I incre created, so I can heal from those. What things did I do that fostered this situation? And I can I heal from those. And then I said, well, what outside influences? So all I did from the outside influences, I moved myself away from those outside influences and, and, and moved back into influences that bring me into a positive of who I desire to be and who I truly am. So I removed myself from those influences. And when I did that, I began to remove myself while amongst the influence, but then after I completely left the influence, then the healing is not a, oh, I need six months, I need a year, I need all this time, you know. No, no, I surrounded myself with people who had a positive influence that uh, moved me up. I, you know, I reconnected with multiple friends who um, pushed that energy up. I, I, constantly in contact with some of my best friends that keep my energy in a place where I'm whole. So it's all about who you surround yourself with and especially who you are inside. Recognizing what you need to do for yourself. What makes you better? What things you need to let go of? What pains you've been holding? What fears you've been carrying? When you release those and you can release it like that because every moment is a day. Every moment is an opportunity. Every moment you can make a decision that says, this is new, not who I am. Uh, when, anytime I've been in a situation and, and, and I want to lash out. For instance, something as simple. You're driving down the street. Somebody cut you off. Do you, ah, 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 you big son of a, are you going off on them? They can't even hear you. Can't hear you. Only if I'm trying to blow the horn so that the person doesn't hit me. To make them aware, but if they just cut me off, why am I going? For that split moment, I think if I blow my horn, is that going to make a difference? If I get all caught up into like you non-driving from, because no one in Atlanta is from Atlanta, so y'all don't have no courtesies. 
Like we used to when I was growing up here in Atlanta. Everybody was courteous when we drove in Atlanta. Now all these people from everybody else, everywhere else is driving any kind of way. But I don't allow for none of that to bother me. I just say, okay, you know what? They're going to go on their merry way. If I can yell and scream, the only, thing, the only person I'm upsetting is myself. So I don't yell and I don't scream about it because what purpose is it going to serve? Do that before you have an emotional outburst towards anything. If I argue about this, what's the benefit? If I yell about this, what's the benefit? If I hold on to this energy, what's the benefit? If I hold on to this incident and be unforgiving, what's the benefit? If there is no benefit, then let it go. Let it go. So I appreciate you guys. Y'all have a great day. Remember, you got to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good vibrations. Good journey.